Okay, so let's talk about the last tool that the Fed has at their disposal to influence the economy through monetary policy. And the last tool is interest rates. We know the impact of interest rates already a little bit because we've looked at it in class. Low interest rates are good for borrowers, they're bad for savers. High interest rates are good for savers, they're bad for borrowers. Well, the Fed can indirectly affect the interest rates that we pay on things like a home or a car or starting a business or what have you through what's called the discount rate and the federal funds rate. All right, so we've mentioned before that banks effectively use the Federal Reserve as their own bank. It's the banker's bank. So if a bank ends up with a lack of liquidity, they can either borrow from a member bank or they can borrow from the Fed. All right, so let's define each of these rates, the discount rate and the federal funds rate. The discount rate is the interest rate that the member banks pay to the Fed when they take loans from the Fed. So we say that the Fed is the lender of last resort, meaning banks go to the Fed if they simply cannot get loans from other banks and they lack liquidity to do so. A typical scenario would be that the banks need to borrow from the Fed because they have low reserves and high withdrawals. Now, if the Fed wants to encourage the economy to grow, they can make easier or they can bring down the rates at which member banks borrow from the Fed so they can lower the discount rate. A lower discount rate encourages borrowing, however, a higher discount rate discourages borrowing. So right now, the discount rate is very, very low. And of course, that would be because the Federal Reserve is continually trying to get the economy to grow. Another interest rate that you should be familiar with is what's called the federal funds rate. The federal funds rate, also referred to as the target rate, is the rate at which the Federal Reserve is trying to affect bank-to-bank -bank lending on short-term interest rates that, again, will ultimately affect the rates that we pay for borrowing for consumer or business purposes. The discount rate is the interest rate the banks pay back to the Fed on borrowed money, and the federal funds rate is the interest rate that the banks pay to each other on borrowed money, both of which the Federal Reserve ultimately controls. The federal funds rate currently is anywhere from 0 to 0.25%, very, very low. All right, so let me show you a graph here, which you can see an example of what the Federal Reserve was trying to do from the mid-2000s to more current times. So in the mid-2000s, the discount rate was just above 6%, right around 6%. The federal funds rate was just over 5%. So again, this is the rate that the Federal Reserve charges member banks when they borrow from them as the lender of last resort. The federal funds rate, or the target rate, was just over 5% in the mid-2000s. This is when the economy was still kind of hot and you know real estate was still strong and the market was somewhat inflationary. You can see that as the recession, the Great Recession, had its impact on the economy, the interest rates for both the discount rate and the federal funds rate dropped tremendously. So what does this tell us? Well, this tells us again that the Federal Reserve is attempting at different times to have different results. Up here in the 6 and 5% rate, they were trying to moderate the economy, slow it down, maybe keep it under control in terms of the inflation that existed in the economy. More currently, they've been trying to keep the economy growing, and so by lowering these rates, making credit more easily available to banks and thus more easily available to individuals, the Federal Reserve is attempting to stimulate the economy. So interest rates play a big part, we know, on lending, of course, borrowing and saving. Here's another graph. This is from the Federal Reserve, and this is from 1997 to more current times. You can see different time periods, what the Federal Reserve does to attempt to offset recessions. So from 1997 to 2000, the economy was expanding. And so it was acceptable, if you will, for the Federal Reserve to keep interest rates above 5% or right around 5%. And I can still remember when Alan Greenspan announced that he would raise these interest rates. And there were a lot of people that criticized that, but he understood that the economy was very, very strong and that the economy was potentially inflationary. Well, in 2001, you can see this gray area is a recessionary period in the economy. We had the dot-com bubble that burst. We also had September 11th, which had negative impact on our economy.
So the Federal Reserve, to try to offset the recession, lowered interest rates to under 2%. These low interest rates became good for borrowing and ultimately stimulated the real estate market as people were able to get low interest rates for borrowing for homes and for investment purposes. So the Federal Reserve, to offset some of the inflationary conditions in the economy, raised interest rates. Okay, so then we have the Great Recession, which basically had the bottom fallout of the real estate market. And so the Federal Reserve, again, tried to offset this recession by lowering interest rates almost to zero. 